So uh, thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for inv uh, inviting me to this um, conference. What I will talk today is more on the AI and some of the application that we use in banking uh, and the finance, financial industry and possibly the AI application overall. So let me keep your introduction very quickly. Uh, my name is Thie Lawat or Thio. Uh, I work at uh, Kung Thai Bank, Kung Thai Innovation Lab now, Infinitas. I lead the data innovation uh, team at uh, Kung Thai Innovation Lab and Infinitas. I used to be in US for about 21 years, working in variety place, and now I'm here in Thailand. Very nice meeting you, Kap. So the agenda today, what we will uh, do is we will go through the overview of the data side, then we will go through each of the application in different area that we use at the bank. And also I want to talk about the data driven organization, how to become one and what are the philosophy or culture that I think is important. So let's talk about first. Um, this is the opening slide I, us I usually like to, to show you that now with the coming of internet, mobile, social media, AI, big data, we are consuming and producing data very, very fast and very, very large every day. And not, we should not say every day anymore. We should say every minute. For example, in 2020, we have about 19 million text message sent in line uh, every minute. We have about 764,000 hours of Netflix being watched every minute. So we can see that we are in an era of exciting era of um, we produce, consume and have technology to produce so much data for us. And how do we take advantage of this? Uh, in addition to the current technology, we also trending to the technology that we even enable us to do a lot more data consuming and data producing. For example, when I was born in 1975, we have 2G technology. This year, we should have 5G technology. How to compare between 2G and 5G? If we want to download a movie of, like, let's say, a small movie like 800 megabyte, with 2G, it will take about one day and 12 hour, one and a half day. With 5G, it will take about one second. With 4G that we have currently widely used now, it's about 43 seconds. You can see that nowadays information and data will be generated very, very fast, very, very large, and everyone will expect much quicker response time and much more and much bigger data set. Again, the data that we have in the past, usually it will be more like structured data, like table data. Nowadays, we have sensor data, log data. Now we also have unstructured data, like video data, voice data, text data, face data, and so on. So whoever be able to use all this information would take uh, us to the high competitive advantage in our industry. So, Having data alone is not enough. In order to make impact in the industry, you need to have definitely have data, but you have to have a technology. You have to be able to use cloud technology or big data technology so that you can capture, store, process, and make sense of that data. And having data and technology alone is not enough. You still need to have knowledge. You still need to know the algorithm in prediction, in AI, and in optimization in order to combine data that you have, technology that you have, and knowledge that you have in order to make sense and to make benefit. Having these two is still not enough. You have, big, you have data, you have technology, you have knowledge. You also have to have a business case and vision. How do you apply all these things to make impact in the business or in the world? and then measure all the things that you do with impact, either by cost, revenue, better life, better society, more productivity, and so on. So in order to make benefit out of 
the thing that we have we need to have data technology knowledge at the same time we need to know the right business case to apply to and know to make impact this is how the business work having this thing alone without business case without impact it will not go very far okay. so what is the example of this company that that use you can see that a uh, company that use all this data all this technology and all this knowledge like alibaba amazon netflix google facebook apple microsoft all these company are rising and anyone that may not be able to catch up either in terms of data either in terms of technology either in terms of use case will fall down so these are the example also of the company who fall down so we are in the era that very exciting we have huge amount of data produced we have good technology we have a lot of knowledge how whoever be able to use that correctly would be the rising of the company and who would not be able to do so would fall down okay. so let's talk about what kind of the thing that we do uh, the ai machine learning that we do in banking before that uh, i want to talk a little bit about what is ai what is machine learning what is deep learning AI have been here for a long time just to try to teach, uh, teach computer how to think or maybe act smart or actually smart. Machine learning is the new concept that add into the AI that I will talk in the next slide. And deep learning is a subset of machine learning that use deep neural network with different architect to actually be able to enable us to solve different problem. What are the different these are applications. AI is all around us. Uh, when we try to buy something, we can pay with face. We will have self driving car. Every time we apply for uh, open email, there's spam detector. That's also AI. Every time you swap your credit card, make transfer, there's a fraud detection. Every time you go to shopping, there's a recommendation for you. That's also AI. Every time I drive, I open Google Map, then it also try to learn what is the condition. So what is the best way to do? That's also AI. And so we are closer and closer with AI around us. But what are machine learning? What are deep learning? I want to go through this concept quickly before we go through, because this concept I think is very important. When we try to teach computer in the past, what we do is we try to keep human rule to it and give the data. And then we can just use expert system so that uh, the machine will act like us and give the answer. This is the idea of the OAI. The machine learning and deep learning use different concept is that we don't tell the rule to the machine. We give the data and sometimes we give the answer. We let the machine to learn from the data and, man, uh, and answer and come up with the rule itself. This is the rule that they will apply to either detect fraud detect phase, detect uh, to make a prediction and everything. So this is the new concept, not very new now, but breakthrough concept at that time to change from the OAI that is not efficient into the AI today. Changing from giving the rule of human to them, by, but now giving that more data to them and then let them come up with the rule. Okay. So this is the, the different concept. Deep learning is nothing more than uh, using the, uh, the technique called neural network that have multiple architect and deep meaning have multiple hidden layer to do a lot more wonder thing. In today, I will give the application at uh, the, the one that we do at the bank into four different area. The first area is computer vision. Teach computer how to see and process what they see to, to make business impact. Second is voice technology and language technology. The language technology like uh, chatbot trans uh, translation and so on. Voice technology is how to use your voice to do uh, to, to serve your customer better. And also we have decision making and forecast. How do we use machine learning to help us in a better operation, better prediction and better business. So let's talk quickly about the AI for computer vision. I usually create with this uh, example. Uh, this is the XLA. Do we, in the audience, do we know 
what are different between left and right? I'm gonna assume. Cancer. To be honest, for me, I am not. I'm not a doctor, so I do not know. Right. So what I see is okay. If they are X-ray, they should have some lung. They should have some heart, and they have some lip. But I have no idea uh, what this meant to be. Maybe only the trained doctor would know. But with the AI, you would be able to train AI to say that, hey, this X-ray is okay. Not, nothing wrong with it. This X-ray is okay. But this one, you have uh, the symptom. You have deceit. This is not okay, and this is not okay. So this is how AI uh, for computer vision can help us a lot. This example is in healthcare, but let me give some example that we use in banking and industry. For example, whenever we, uh, whenever we serve the customer, no matter um, uh, at the branch or remotely in our mobile app, and also on a government uh, program, we need to be able to identify who they are, know that know our customer so that they can identify themselves. So we have the face recognition technology that can read the face data through mobile and identify document and be able to compare and identify that these two people are the same person or not. The technique that we use here is more like say a myth network that you can actually change one face into an embedding vector or uh, the, the, um, uh, the meta face and then compare the distance between these two meta face. If this fan, distance is below some threshold, then you say that this person are the same person. If it be, be uh, higher than some threshold, this person is not the same. So what I will show you next is, uh, this is what we have currently. Uh, we have our own model and we also have the model that uh, we have from a uh, Chinese vendor uh, so that we can actually compare. This is my face, this is my uh, Thai national ID and then it give that, okay, it pass. We, uh, this is also the app that we have uh, at the lab to identify this me. So let me show you a quick video so that it's not just a plain uh, text our picture. Let me show you a quick video on this screen, the one that I use. This one, I just used the picture when I was young to see if it actually can take or not. Is it my son? Is it my wife? And we can also take, okay. Just to show you that uh, all this thing we, we, we done here. And more than that, we actually be able to detect uh, the all the alignment on the face so that we can do more like a motion. So let me let me show you the, uh, the thing that we do for the motion because if we only have face comparison, there might be fraud that people can try to use the picture like I just did. So we need to have a liveness of motion. So we create motion. Uh, this one is uh, detect the uh, emotion. So let me skip because we have limited time. Let me open the motion. I should tell you to open my mouth. I did. I 
Let me skip to the one that. So if, if the machine tried to turn around, I can do something else. It should not pass. Okay, so this is just an example that uh, the thing that we do in uh, at Infinitas and at the bank also that we do phase comparison and we measure our fall accept and fall rejection rate. We have a similar rate as uh, the, the Chinese vendor now. And now we also build our own uh, motion so that we can have liveness detection. Okay. Um, more than that for the um, for the visualized uh, AI, we also have document validator. So we have the model that um, when you take a photo of our national ID, it can actually defy if this is the national ID or not. Like this one, we, we show that it confident 100% that the national ID. This one, they have confident like 0% that it national ID. So we can also use this to help when we want to validate a document uh, remotely. And uh, we also have many different models to detect if it actually real or it's actually a picture, if it's actually photocopy or not. So this is some sample of the application that we use here. Uh, we also teach computer how to read the text. This is called OCR, Optical Characteristic Recognition. Uh, we, this is just uh, the, what OCR is, you have text. Uh, in the picture, they, you want the um, AI to be able to read and then get the text out into electronic, readable, usable one so that you can use it furthermore. This one, the one that we use at Kruong uh, Thai Bank, we already implement the document OCR in the, the loan factory. You can see that the picture come here, document come here in the PDF, the quality is not that good, but the AI can actually read the correct field, the required field, and then show this image to the user. So user doesn't have to go and open PDF, read one by one and enter anymore. User can just submit this automatically, and then it will return this. User just need to check if this is the image, this is the OCR. If everything, this table is correct, user just click OK then the information will be filled automatically into the system. So it's semi-automatic because we know that we don't want a mistake and OCR is not 100%, but at least it saved a lot of time. So you said, instead of having have to have many screen open the document, it can submit to OCR automatically and then just check this table. If it's not correct, just fix here, and then it will auto enter into the system. So this is the application at OCR that we use at the bank. Uh, when we do document validation, we also have the one that uh, identify if this is the national ID or not, but we also have the uh, OCR capability to read information from the national ID and then what are the name, address, date of birth, expiration date, and so on. So we have capability not just to detect if this is national ID, but to read it out. This is the uh, national ID uh, number. So the average AI can read it out. We also have the method to clean a document. We can pass in the, uh, the document that may be hard to OCR, maybe not clean and come out to be the clean text so that we can do better OCR. So this is some AI technology that we, we do at the bank. I know we don't have much time, so I will try to go fast, faster. We also do object detection. Anyone would be able to see that from the video or from the picture, you would be able to have the AI to identify, okay, this is a person, this is a car, what direction they are moving and so on. What do we do at the bank? We actually, uh, this is not the bank. This is the example that Walmart used. Walmart have the robot that go through each eye of the, the department store and then identify to replenish uh, the, the SKU so they can detect what are the SKU, what are the missing. And this is the tracking example. This is the cell checkout example that use object detection. But for us, we do this. We use object detection as part of the uh, NID validation. So we have the model to validate if it looked like NID. 
We also have model to read information from ID out. We also have another one to detect all the required object on the NID and make sure that we have watermark, we have the picture at the right place, anchor everything are right, so we can detect if it's real or fake, it, uh, national ID as well. Okay. So that is all for the uh, visual. So let me go on the language. This one I want to play quickly. This is a video that inspired me when I read language. This is like three years ago or more. This is the one when I uh, watched YouTube for the first time. We are here in Harajuku, Tokyo. We are hungry. We don't know what to eat. So we're going to use Illy and ask Japanese locals what their favorite food is. And you're going to come along for the ride. Which is your favorite Japanese dish? Can you write it down for us? So this is the inspiration video. So at that night, I think, okay, we can do this. We have API, we have all this thing that we can do, put together. So I put together this code. That's my long time ago. Okay, so of course I don't know Japanese, I don't know it translated correctly, so I did it in English. Hello, my name is Thira Wadasapabi. Thank you for listening today. So this is just an example when I do it that time. And now when we come to the lab, we create this. So we incorporate into the line. Uh, we have not released to public yet, but you can actually take a photo or talk and then the live program will interpret the language for you like this. So you can just use functionality apply, you can clock everything, send into uh, we call non yu or our chatbot. And then we, it will translate, okay, this means high voltage electricity. So you can send picture in, you can also talk to them. Uh, it will ask if you want to what language. So I said English. And it will translate and then send the voice back to you. Voice and text. So hello, I want to go to Namba and this is my life. Hello, I want to go to Namba station. Can you call me a taxi? Thank you. Okay. Uh, that is the, the one that we uh, do and we, we, we plan to release, but not yet. And this, this one is what I do for fun, but I, let me just show you a very quick one. This one, I, I speak in Thai, but I want to, them to speak in Japanese. So this is the one that I get from playing with the Google expert. They have their repository and then I translate uh, into to use here. So it will be used for video translation. So for example, I watch this new in Chinese and I don't know what it means. Hello, my name is so I can translate into English here. 
You are watching. This kind of serious illegal acts healthy and damages Hong Kong's life. Choosing to return to Hong Kong's fundamental. So because of time, I will stop uh, this slide. So just to show you that we can also do language for the translation. And we also have our chatbot. If you like, please uh, download Kung Thai Connect. Kung Thai Connect, you can talk to them, text to them. You can search for uh, location. It will actually ask you if you want to go ATM around you, shop around you. You can just talk to them. Any language, you can you can talk and then you can share location. It will recommend the location around you. And if you want to go there, it will open Google Map for you. So this is the language model that we do at the bank for chatbot. I know I have five more minutes, so let me do voice very quickly. Let me skip this page. Uh, this is a one I want to show you. This is the voice uh, bot that we will put into our call center to help uh, to help call routing so that people doesn't have to uh, just listen to the menu and but just can talk to the bot. Please see. So this is a demo of voice call routing. ของกรุงไทยนะครับเป็นไวท์เทคโนโลยีไวเอเจนต์ส่วนดีคะยินดีต้อนรับเข้าสู่ระบบสั่งการด้วยเสียงกรุณาพูดรายการที่คุณต้
So you can see that by using the machine learning to make a predict right, you can predict who may want your product at this time, at what time, so you can, and what channel, so you can actually have a next best action to sell to them. This is all digital lending that you can now, you don't have to go to the bank to get a loan. You can actually get a loan from your mobile phone. Okay. I know that uh, it's almost time. So let me talk two points and then I will end. Point number one for the culture. Don't aim for perfection. Nothing is perfect. Don't work for perfection, but take very long time to finish. Your solution will not get used. Try the best solution and go fast and iterate. Learn from your mistake and iterate. You don't want to make mistake. You want to make the best thing that you can do, but don't take too long. Try to iterate. Not, no, nothing is perfect in this world. Even your assumption is not perfect. Let your product the best you can and iterate, learn from it. So that you learn from your mistake and you keep moving forward and then you become a leader. Last one. This is not from me, but from Google book. Uh, try to ignore or eliminate hippo effect. Hippo meaning highest paid person uh, opinion. Usually it's a boss. Uh, in this picture from Google, everyone have data to support that should go with option A. Hippo say that I want to go with option B with nothing to support. So if we follow Hippo with our data, then it's okay, but don't call yourself data-driven organization. Let's call Hippo organization. We want to make it clear that we want to use fact data to make a discussion and make the best uh, option, no matter what uh, opinion or idea come from what level. If it's the right thing, have data to support, we should listen to them. Okay. Anyway, I know that uh, it's about time now, so I want to be respective of time. Uh, I will end my presentation now. If you have any question, please let me know. Okay. Wow, thank you, Dr. Hiramat. It was a great presentation. I really enjoy the last part about the hippo. <laughs> I really try. And, yes, and I think everyone has experienced that, right? Um, in their working life, um, you try to do everything supported with information, but it gets rejected because you are not the hippo. 